Security in Windows 2000 can actually be done a number of different ways. We're just going to take a look at some of the basics here. Um, the first what we can do is we can simply choose a particular file or folder. We'll choose a file. And we'll right click on it and choose the properties. At this point you see we've got a security tab at the top. Before we go there, take a look at the attributes down along the bottom. This file is neither chosen to be read-only or hidden. Um, we can choose either of those by doing a simple checkbox and we can also click the advanced button and we can choose whether we want the file to be compressed or encrypted. Now the encrypted one will allow you to make this data secure so that somebody else cannot access it. Unfortunately these two commands, these two checkboxes, are often put together and you assume that you can do both. However, you cannot. They act more like radio buttons. So you can either compress the data to save disk space or you can encrypt it. From a security standpoint, we're only worried about encrypting the data. Let's go back to the security tab itself and we can choose to look at the permissions that are there for each individual. The administrator in this case is allowed everything. We have a particular user who is allowed only certain permissions and we've got the system users as well. We can click the advance button and we can go through and add different users who have access to it as well as groups. The groups are identified by two people in the icon. If we scroll down towards the bottom you'll see computers and we should see single users down towards the bottom as well. We have single users. Clicking any one of those we can choose to add them to it and choose what permissions that they will have. There's quite an extensive set of permissions that can be allowed or denied. This person can read the file, this person can write the file, this person can delete the file, and so on. So there's quite a bit of granularity included in Windows 2000 for that. Um, from a more simplistic standpoint, we can go to the start, to the command prompt, and pick any file there and just simply use the attrib command which has been around since the very beginning days of DOS and look at the attributes associated with a file. You can see that at the first entry we have a file which is archived meaning it will be included in the backup. It is a system file, the S, it is hidden and it is read only. All of those can be changed by using the attrib command as well. And an easy way to get information on that is to do the attrib with the ask for help on it command the slash question mark and it will show you that you can change any of those files as well. We'll take a similar look at what's done in Windows XP now as well. For security in Windows XP we've got very similar to what we had in Windows 2000 with one additional addition. And we'll look at that in a moment. First off let's take a look at the file properties. We've got an item on the desktop here. We're going to just simply right click, choose properties, and you'll see the security tab popping up. The security tab will allow us to look at the granular security, but down at the bottom we also have the read-only and hidden values, as well as the advanced button, which lets us choose once again between compressing or encrypting. Let's cancel a lot of that and go to our security tab. And this looks very, very similar to what we saw with Windows 2000. You've got full control, modify, read and execute, read, write, and special permissions. If we want to know what the special permissions are, we can click the advanced tab and get a little bit more information there. We can choose auditing, set the owner, look at the effective permissions, and here's where we saw, see what we saw in Windows 2000, the ability to look at the read attributes, list the folder, delete, and such. Okay, so that's all very, very similar to what we saw in Windows 2000. What's different than what we saw in Windows 2000 is that Windows XP includes something called the Windows Firewall. We'll go to the Settings, Control Panel, and down at the bottom of the control panel we have this Windows Firewall option. And here you can choose how the Windows Firewall will work. You can configure your exceptions. And you can also go to the Advanced tab and get a lot of granularity there. Network connections, security logging, ICMP, pinging basically, and your default settings are all available there. If you mess up, don't know what you're doing, always go to the default settings, choose restore defaults, and you're back in operation. So that's another level of granularity to security that Microsoft has added with the release of Windows XP.